Bert Krasner, I want you to know that you've inspired me. I've um, just started following you and your podcast. I weigh in excess of 470 pounds. And uh, well, if you can do it, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. So I took my first um, uh, video from my chair where I usually sit Sunday and watch football. Uh, I congratulate you again on your run, and uh, uh, let's do let's do the Mickey Mantle team. Welcome to another episode of Fifty Two Weeks. I'm T W King, and this is my journey. This week we have a special guest. We got Vance Hines. Uh, this gentleman, uh, about three years ago, decided to start a a health journey that started at 475 pounds and now I believe he is down to 237 pounds in three years. Spoiler alert. Um, I could go on and on and I will go on and on later at the end of this. Uh, we're going to get uh, my official weigh-in for my two-month mark and uh, Beyond that, you know what? Let's just uh, let Bert Kreischer do the rest of the introduction because he's going to do a far better job than I could. So as most of you know, I ran a half marathon on November 19th. On November 20th, someone saw me run the half marathon and decided to start a weight loss journey, which has taken him from, where did you start at, Vance? 475. 475 to today. Six months later, 382. Woo! 382. Yeah! 82. 93 pounds now. We gotta give a shout out to Diamond Dallas Page right now, who has been his circle on this journey. But don't ever forget, Diamond Dallas Page, I was his fucking inspiration. You understand that, DDB? Right here, the machine. We started this together. And I'm, I'm so fucking proud of you, Vance. Follow him on 1515. Follow on 1515. Vance Hunt, the motherfucker in the house. Yeah! Vance, um, if you would, I know this uh, this journey for you, at least the, the starting of this, from, from what I've noticed, has kind of started almost about three years ago. But before we actually get to that, if you could do me a favor, take us back to the beginning. Had you had you always been overweight? Uh, for the most part, since college, um, like um. You know, I played football and um, played football in high school, played one year of college at, a, at the, about as small a uh, college as you can go to, Austin College. And they were NAIA Division Two. if that tells you anything. It does, but, actually. Yeah, but I played football for them one year, and then my grades were so bad I couldn't play again. And after that year, um, I pretty much, you know, um, partied and, and gained weight and um, um, you know I really after after that I like I went to law school in 93 I was weighing 330 at law school 300 to 330 in 93 and um, you know I've been 400 probably for the last uh, 20 years I'd say okay um, and from from the time you had left college, uh, uh, what was your weight around the the point when you were actually playing football? Two twenty. I weighed in my my college freshman year at two twenty one. Okay. And I weighed in my high school um, senior year at two thirty seven. And uh, uh, the college they run you through three a days, so right. uh, they had me lean down some. And then my junior year, I weighed in at two twelve. Okay. Um, and then, so after that, uh, once you, once you got into partying and just kind of, you know, you start intaking more, but you're not having the output cause you weren't playing anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, how quick was the, the increase in weight? I know you said by the time you went to law school, you were at three thirty, So that's about a hundred pounds, but how long did it take to get to that point? Well, I, I want to clear up a misconception. You said, uh, started partying, um, 
I never really stopped. That was the why I only played one year of football because I flunked out. So uh, gotcha. it started poly, partying and mischaracterization, <laughs> you know. But but, uh, uh, but you know, I started gaining weight. I probably got married in '89. I probably weighed. Uh, you know, 260-ish, 270-ish in, in 89, something like that. I, and uh, But I was always, well, no, see, I went to law school in 90, and I was pushing 300 then, so it's... Okay. It, it didn't take me long to um, to put on the weight after that, so I always ate well. That's uh, that's something my, my mother-in-law always tells me is that, you know, it didn't take you a day to put it all on. So yeah, don't don't right. expect it all to come off in a day too, you know. Absolutely, I always tell people we got the rest of our lives to lose this weight. You know, a lot of people um, put a, a an arbitrary deadline or or date or a time on themselves, and they get discouraged or depressed because they don't meet this deadline, self-imposed deadline that they put on themselves. But the truth is, man, that as long as we're on this earth, we got time to lose weight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, so before I get to my next question, I have a, a preliminary question for that. Yeah. Um, what, what were you at your heaviest? 478 that I know of, but I, I think I was over 500 at times, but okay. the, the most I ever weighed on a scale was 478. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so when, when was it, that that you decided to make a change i mean do you remember the the day or the moment but, oh there... yeah the the um that's uh part of the the thing that went viral i think is that uh, bert chrysler is one that kind of uh, spared me on but but um i don't know how far back you want me to go but I oh, as, as far I back as I, because again, this, this channel is about inspiring others and I, That's good. I try to, God's work. well, I, I believe so. I believe, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a person of faith as well. And I, I think mm -hmm. that, you know, there's many things he can put on our hearts. And once I realized that, you know, I needed to make a change, I realized that I needed to record this change. And that was a part of, you know, experiencing what you had started to put out on the internet. Watching your first video for me, I was watching a man who had a true realization. And I hadn't seen the end result yet, but I didn't start catching on to who you were until about two months ago. It was right around the time I started this. A buddy of mine got, uh, got me the, the DDP yoga and he was like, there's this guy you got to check out. He did this. And then I started looking. And, you know, when you ask how far do I want you to go back, as, as much time as you're willing to dedicate to this, because for me, it's what I can learn from you, but what others can learn from how similar our situations actually are, the similarities between the things that have kept us back, the things that keep us going forward. Because though the, we're all different people, there are things that are, identical in our defeats and in our successes and those are what i want to i want to capture and harness on because i think that's what what helps build the habits of of continuing to move forward so as far as you're willing to go you know it was i i know bert was a big part of it so well i appreciate that yeah he's the catalyst uh, that really got me going this time but um you know you said a couple of things pretty uh uh, pretty accurate, pretty deep about, you know, the failures are being are common and, uh, um, you know, the failures are, are what we can learn from each other, but the failures is what really gets us to where we are today. You know, if we didn't take the chances, do you, do you ever read any Brene Brown? No. Do you know who that is? I don't. She's a, she's a, um, uh, psychologist, but also a, a, a professor, or used to be at the University of um, Houston, I think, but I think she now is doing some stuff at University of Texas, but she's a researcher of things like um, vulnerability and um, uh, I forget what all she researches, but, but 
um, you know, basically she says you, we can't go forwards without putting ourselves in a vulnerable position. And, you know, she quotes, she, she quotes that man in the arena quote from um, Theodore Roosevelt talking about, you know, he doesn't care about the people on the sidelines doing the talking. It's that man in the arena getting bloodied and losing and getting his butt whooped. He's the one that needs to be admired and listened to. And, and basically, you know, there's, um, we've got to put ourselves in that vulnerable situation to learn and we're going to lose. We're going to lose spectacularly, but every time we lose, we're going to learn something new to use the next time, you know? So, Absolutely. So failures are a big part of winning is, is the way I look at it. Gotcha. But any, but back to, back to your answer, your question was, um, you know, I, in 2012, I was in ICU for five days. I don't know if you've heard this story, but I, I, had um, I um, couldn't breathe. I mean, I couldn't breathe at all. And um, I went to a hearing up in Dallas. I'm an attorney for those people that don't know. And I was in private, I had my own private practice back then. I went to a hearing up in Dallas. I had to sit down and uh, sit down and catch my breath to keep from passing out three times in getting from the car to the courtroom and then from the courtroom back. And I went to my doctor and the doctor immediately had a nurse walk me. His office was across the street from the hospital, walked me across the street and he wouldn't even let me go over there by myself. He made a nurse walk me over. My lungs were full of fluid. They put me in ICU and they diagnosed me with um, uh, pulmonary embolism. And they didn't think I was gonna make it out. So for five days, I had friends and relatives visiting me and um you know all this stuff and you know it it hit me uh they you know they didn't think i was gonna make it out and that that moment changed my life you know because not at that point i was drinking every day you know i was smoking cigars every day i was um you know hell i drink three handles i don't know if if, if, if the reference handles mean anything to you but i yes it does <laughs> I would buy three handles every week and drink them. And so oh, I'd just, you know, I'd work and go home and drink till I went to bed and then work and go home and drink till I went to bed. And uh, uh, depending on what night it was, I'd have different liquors. So, but um, that time in ICU scared me so bad that I had, haven't had a cigar or a drink or alcohol since I walked out of the hospital well, since the night before I went in the hospital back in July of 2012. Wow. And um, and so I just quit cold turkey because I had teenage kids. I had um, my kids range from like 12 to 18 at the time. And my wife and, uh, you know, I if I wasn't here to help them, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what their future looked like. I, so when I walked out of that hospital in 2012, I had two goals. And that was to get my kids to 18 and to get my wife some kind of pension and gotcha. uh, nothing else mattered. And so I walked out of the hospital, uh, asked the local DA if he had a job and he, he had a, a job uh, prosecuting tickets in JP court, which is the lowest of the low. And I took it just to have it. I'd been a lawyer for 19 years at this point. But I took it just to get it, to get the benefits, to start working toward a pension and have a ready steady job. And uh, so I, um, you know, for five years, I didn't drink, didn't uh, smoke any cigars, and uh, but I kept eating. And so, um, you know, I had changed uh, my life around financially. I had changed my, my life around uh, drinking and cigars. I had changed everything around. And, and things were starting to look better. I'd moved up into the DA's office, into the civil division, gotten better pay. And, um, you know, but I kept thinking I, I can lose this weight. And so I went and had my, my heart checked out. You know, after I left out of that hospital, I thought I was going to die at any moment. And so I didn't even follow up with a the cardiologist. They, the, 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 the leaving diagnosis was uh, congestive heart failure, but they couldn't really see all my heart because of how fat I was. They couldn't get a good picture of my heart. And so um, 
but they they couldn't find anything else, so that's what they told me I had. Gotcha. So I left. I left thinking I was going to die any moment, and um, and so I just quit drinking, quit smoking, went to work because I had to, I got for the county you got to work eight years to get a pension. Right. Uh, for my wife, I knew I wasn't going to see it, and uh, I just wanted to get it for her, and um, so started working. You know, five years go by, I'm still here. Um, so I I um, started thinking, I, you know, I need to start working out, doing something. So I finally go to the cardiologist, and I, and the cardiologist run all these tests on me, and the doctor says basically he can't find any congestive heart failure. So for five years, I, I thought I was dying any moment, and he couldn't find evidence of it. And then... Um, I told him I was going to sue the hospital for ruining five years of good drinking time. So, right? I mean, you just, you're yeah. sitting there in a in a supposed death sentence at that point. That's you're right. just you're just waiting for him to walk you down and and stick you in the in the cart, man. Absolutely, and that's what I thought every day. I just was hoping I'd I'd get my kids to eighteen and uh, and I'd get my um, get that pension. And so five years went by, and. My, we got all the kids to 18, so I made the first go. Gotcha. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, yeah, and I'm sitting there. Um, at first, I go get my heart checked out, and they said it looked good. So then I, I went to go get my knees checked out because they were bone on bone uh, from carrying all that weight all these years. And, yeah. uh, and so he told me I'm eligible for um, knee replacements in both knees. And uh, he said... Uh, uh, but he wouldn't do it unless I lose, I get under 300. And so yeah. I felt like I was still stuck in this same hole that I damned if I do, damned if I don't. I didn't know. I didn't see any light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. So that, that, that's kind of the, the long story of what I was sitting in when that chair, when on the video that they DDP posted, because I was sitting in a chair Sunday morning, drinking my coffee. We were watching um, the pre games on the football, um, mm -hmm. you know, I was getting ready. I was fat. I was big into fantasy football then. And, um, it was November like 17th. And up until that time, I'd been, uh, listening to Bert Chrysler and Joe Rogan and Ari Shafir and Tom Segura, listen to them do sober October. Gotcha. And it was really hilarious. You know, you could listen to each one's podcast and they would, you know, reference and then, and, uh, rib each other and do different things and so yeah so it was it was a great month of listening to those guys and then when it was over the first of november they got together and had like a reunion podcast and they were getting drunk and high you know because during october they 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 couldn't get do any drugs they couldn't drink yeah. they had to do 14 hot yogurts that year they change it up every year but <laughs> so uh, they thought it was going to kill Bert, you know, because he's a big, heavy drinker. Yeah. And uh, and so he made it. He did the hot yogas. He went the month sober. And they got together and they were having their reunion. And um, they were getting high and drunk, of course. And then um, they started really giving Bert a hard time. Bert, if I... I, I take it from the, your comments that you know, are, are familiar with who Bird is. Absolutely, yes. Right. But he, yeah, he's a real uh, self-deprecating kind of guy, and he's yep. real um, um, easy to rib. You know, people pick on him all the time because he, he, he laughs at it. And yeah. So they were, they were wearing him out at this reunion, and he kept telling them he can do anything because he's got the Mickey Mantle gene. Got and, the Mickey uh, Mantle gene. The Mickey Mantle gene. And he said, <laughs> you know, and he kept getting drunker and drunker. And then by the end, uh, he told him he's going to run a half marathon. They said, he, no way. So I didn't think anything else of it. Two two weeks, two and a half weeks later, I'm sitting in that chair, uh, looking through my Instagram, and there's Bert finishing the St. Pete's half marathon. Right. It, on two weeks notice, two and a half weeks notice. And I was like. You know, I'm I'm just sitting there thinking, if if this silly son of a bitch can do that on two and a half weeks' notice, surely there's something, some kind of extra, something out there I can do to lose weight. Right. And so that's when I 
I just I, I hadn't been thinking about it. I'd already given up. I just figured I was going to work till I died. And so I just took the video out and I said, Bert, you've inspired me and made a video, posted it on all my social media and uh, uh, tagged all four of those guys and, uh, uh, you know, went on about my day. I didn't think much of it. And then um, that night I was... Uh, sitting in the restroom and before I went to bed, my wife was asleep and I was checking my, my, my post before I went to bed and there Bert had, had tagged Tom Segura and said, changing lives. I got so excited. I went in there and woke up my wife and said, the shit is on <laughs> the shit is on. So that next morning I got up and weighed myself in my underwear. And, uh, that's when I weighed 475 and, uh, that was the next morning. And, uh, my wife, was mad. She thought I was going to get fired for, you know, I worked for the, the county DA and I'm there weighing myself in, the, in my underwear on the internet. And, right. Uh, so um, I didn't get fired, but, uh, uh, but that kind of, that's what started it all. That, that, that was the long winded version of what got me going. No, uh, that's, it, that's great. And mm -hmm. so with that being said, so now we're up to the point of you actually taking the first step and understanding that it, it spurred from the inspiration of seeing another man do something that was presumably, I mean, in, in most cases, not impossible, but highly implausible or implausible. The idea of somebody just getting up and running a marathon, like there's, there's TV shows that have used that premise as a joke. That, you know, like the guy just, I'm, well, I'm just going to go do a marathon, you know, but he goes and he actually does it. And this gives you the idea to start looking for what you can do. Now, for me, what I've noticed is that after you make that first start and almost everybody I've talked to, uh, it's, it's all come down to just get, getting up and doing something, just starting and that seems to be like the biggest hurdle almost everybody comes up on is how do I even just make the first move? The second hurdle I've, I'm coming to find is how do I stick with it? And I guess that would be my question to you. Um, watching your videos within your first week, I think it was the, the actual first week of it, um, you had posted and you weren't completely depressed it didn't seem but you had you had claimed it was a failure the first week was unsuccessful all right this is monday november 27th i um have been doing this a week doing this challenge a week um i want to thank everyone who has said encouraging things to me on the internet and supported me throughout this process um this is the first time I've weighed after weighing last Monday. I wanted y'all to know I, uh, uh, after weighing in my underwear last week, my wife, um, um, not too happy about that. So I will save the underwear weigh-ins for, uh, important parts and important, uh, uh, landmarks or important mileposts in the future as a comparison. Also, Twitter uh, filtered me, or I guess my, their algorithm couldn't tell if I was a bald woman or a man with boobs. So I'll, uh, I'll save the Twitter and my wife, the embarrassment, and wear shirt and shorts uh, until I lose some more weight. But um, this has been Thanksgiving week. I didn't do very well on Thanksgiving. My son made a kick-ass chocolate pie with a, the big two and a half, three inch meringue on it. I had to have a piece of it. Went to the deer lease over the weekend. I did mediocre there, but didn't exercise. Um, but did real well Monday through Wednesday. Um, swam a little Monday. Uh, did aqua aerobics class Tuesday. Met uh, two beautiful people, David Snell and Charlene Simmons Butler, who's my classmates at the Getz and Dana Park, and they walked with me around the park. I had to stop five or six times to uh, catch my breath. They were patient. They, 
David drove 30 miles to make me walk around the park, and we're gonna make it every Wednesday at five o'clock. So here we go. Uh, I'm gonna step on the scale. Uh, let's see how I did last week. Um, the, um, we'll see how it goes. I gotta stand real still. The, um, this, tonight I've got water aerobics. Tomorrow night I've got, no, tonight I've got swimming. Going out, I got, I got water aerobics Wednesday. Uh, walking in the park. Shit. I gained three pounds. Damn. I'm gonna have to do better. I guess it was Thanksgiving and Deer Leaf. Maybe it's three pounds of clothes, I, I, I don't know. But uh, this week, we're gonna do better. We're gonna keep at it. We're gonna stay positive. My goal is to make this public so that I'm committed and also to say yes when people uh, offer to do things with me, to get me out of my comfort zone. So uh, I gotta tell you, I was disappointed going up three pounds, but uh, it was Thanksgiving and that damn chocolate pie sure was good. So, all right, here we go. We will uh, see you next Monday for the Monday weigh-in. Folks, don't forget to like, subscribe, don't forget to like, subscribe, share if you enjoy the content. I do truly appreciate it. We also have Patreon, we got merch, we got links all over the place. Um, and again, thank you guys so much for, for hanging in for the long haul. What, what about the first week was unsuccessful then for you? Well, I, I ate like I thought I was dieting and I worked out, I don't know, almost every day that week and I gained three pounds. So and I you, weighed 475 when I started. I weighed 478 after a week of, of uh, trying to lose weight. It, it was, uh, it was kind of counterproductive. At that that's point. Right. Yeah, that's it's right. like, why would I do this? It's supposed yeah. to go the other direction. That's right. And now, but I, yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to address before I forget. I'm old. Yes. I keep, I keep forgetting things. You said, how do you start? Right. There's a book out there called Atomic Habits by James Clear. I just finished listening to it on, on Audible. And uh, he talks about, don't look at the end picture, don't look at the results. Everybody looks at the results and that makes you feel like, shit, I can't do this. I mean, I'm never gonna be able to get there. But, but, but he, said, he said, you know, that's the, the premise of the book do atomic habits do small things he said if you want to work out pick a time and just put on you know the first time first week just put on your workout clothes and nothing more and then the second week just drive to the gym but don't even get out of the car and then the third week you're trying to get the habit and you start he says those atomic habits compound like compound interest and build into into bigger habits and so that's basically the premise of the book is that you you start very small and i can't tell you you know since this thing's gone viral how many people i've i've um been in contact with who's had a ton of weight to lose but and they always start out so gung-ho that um you know it's not sustainable and that got that gets to your second question is um you know don't start out too hard too big too head first too you know because the whole thing was in my opinion of sustaining it is to be able to do things you can live with you know when i would go to the gym uh, and i'd get a, a, a trainer that person would yell at me i'd work out i'd lose weight i'd hate it as soon as I, and I, you know, as soon as I rent, you know, I could, I didn't, I didn't want to afford that person anymore and I wasn't going to do it long term. Yeah. So I knew this time I can't do those routes. And, and same thing with anything that's going to cost me money, anything that hurts my knees, anything, if I'm not 
you know, if I'm not going to stick with it long term, it's not worth my time in making it become a habit. Like I right. went to Camp Gladiator. They had asked me a couple of times when when I started uh, getting kind of public to come to their Camp Gladiator, and I did, you know, and those guys beat the hell out of me. There's no way I was going to keep doing it. Now, now nothing against Camp Gladiator. I think that's a young man's sport, not a 50 right. Three year old man, that's how old I was when I started. And so, right. and with bad knees, there's no way I can do that. So, I, I, my goal, when, when I first started, I had two principles uh, say yes, commit to yes, and post everything online. And you've already addressed about the posting, the accountability of it, because I knew every other time I had started stuff, I would start and stop and not tell anybody. And, you know, I, I kept it a secret. So I, kn so I knew that this time had to be different. And so I just started putting it on my social media. And, I, and then if anybody said, which they have done over the years, they say, come work out with me, come try this, come do this. Uh, I would always poo-poo it off and not figure out a way not to go, you know. And I even tried to do it on this one. David Snell and, and Charlene Simmons uh, wanted me to go walking in the park and it was Wednesday night before Thanksgiving that first week. Right. And I said, yes. And then Wednesday afternoon got there and I said, well, David, it's Thanksgiving. Let's, uh, let's, let's start next week. And David said, nope, we're going tonight. All right. Now we're going. All right. We're in the park. We're having a lot of technical difficulties due to the uh, operator yes. of, the, of the camera. But uh, David <laughs> Snell and Charlene Simmons Butler, they, they, uh, came to walk with me and get some Dana Park and walks a hatchy. David drove 30 miles to be here. They're going to help me on my quest. Yes. Let's do it. Are. Let's do it. All right. Let's rock and roll, bud. And so I had to go meet him, and we started walking that Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And, uh, you know, you just you just got to do it. And, and there's another example in that book of um, – uh, in Atomic Habits that James Clear talks about. And it's it's some kind of photography class that did an experiment. And it said that half the people in the class are going to be graded on the quantity of photos that they do. Half the people are going to be only turn in one photo and they're going to be graded on the quality of the photo. And so when they turned in all the photos, the, the people that of the quantity group turned in all the best photos because they were trying different things. They were, um, you know, they were just trying to get their numbers up. So they were piddling and, and trying all kinds of weird stuff. And they ended up with all the best photos. And these people that sat around and talked about the best way to get the perfect picture and sat around and talked about it and worked on it and tried to get just, you know, right timing and everything before they started and stopped. These guys, all these guys' pictures were mediocre. Yeah. And so the, the, the moral of that story that James Clear talks about is just get out there and start doing it, even if it's wrong. I mean, yeah. just, and tweak it and just, you know, you may hit that perfect photo, not even knowing what you're doing. You may hit that perfect exercise that sticks with you. You may hit the perfect diet that sticks with you. Shit, we got the rest of our life to lose this weight. You don't have to research and do the find the right one on the first try. Right. I mean, just, I'm always better to better to make doing. a mistake at, at least Absolutely. making something. That's Otherwise, just you're move. just sitting. Yeah, you know when he quotes, uh, I think it's Plato and Plato or Socrates. I think I'm probably I'm probably getting this wrong. That best is the enemy of good. Right. And uh, what that means is that we're sitting around talking and trying to get the best thing that we can do, but when we should just be out there doing. Yeah. And, we're missing and, all the good. Yes. We're missing yeah. the good. And the, in the quest, in the quest for best, you miss all the good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Well, with that being said, because now we get into the, the actual journey of you moving further, because now we've come to a point we're three years, about three years into this, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it was back in 2017 when you started and in your first year, um, I don't want to kind of ruin anything there, but from where you were at three, or excuse me, 478, because you had put on three pounds, 
Mm -hmm. um, at your lowest weight right now, you've lost like two people worth of weight. Because you're, you're down to 200, if I'm not mistaken? Down to 230, 234 last Wednesday. All right, it's uh, Wednesday, October the 28th. Last week I weighed 234. Uh, let's see what we did this week. Two thirty four. Mm -hmm. So I'm down uh, two hundred and forty one pounds. Two hundred and forty one pounds, man. I'll tell you a secret. You know that video that that DDP and Steve you put together that went viral. I always measured my weight from that first weigh in, four seventy five. I weighed in at two seventy seven. So that's 198 pounds. Right. I didn't count those three pounds that I gained. So really, I've lost. I lost over 200 in 51 weeks. Goodness. Well, but 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 I stuck with that. Two four seventy five. Two seventy five. Right. Yeah, so I stuck with it. Now, with that being said, because you know, through through the time on the channel for me. I decided I was going to just, I was going to start with 52 weeks and just see what happens at the end of 52 weeks. And when I started, I was setting a goal, you know, and my goal came out of the idea um, on uh, February 5th of 2018, I was in an accident uh, that damaged my back and kind of messed up a bunch of different spinal vertebrae stuff there. I got like two ruptured discs and bulgy whack-a-madoos all throughout the spine. Um, and when I went to go see the doctors, uh, they told me that they needed to, to fuse two of the discs together, um, which have a potential to, to help with the numbness in my legs and uh, to help with the pain, most importantly. Uh, the only problem was every surgeon I spoke to said, we can't put you on the table because you're probably going to die. Uh, and it was because of the length of time for the actual surgery so that they could fix my back. And they set a weight of 200 pounds. You need to get to 200 pounds and then we'd be able to go in for the amount of time that we would need to keep you on the table. So I was like, okay, let's see what I can do in 52 weeks. And uh, I had heard something similar uh, around my third or fourth week of doing this that you had mentioned, which was don't set goals, create habits. So you were talking about the atomic habits. Um, and instead of having like a final goal, I switched my mind frame to being, I need to have like a lifestyle change. Health needs to be my goal, not uh, a point out in the future, but a point now, and that I needed to create habits that would actually do that. My question for you is, which was harder to cultivate habit-wise? Was it the habit of exercise or the habit of diet? Because you've done both. That's the only way you get to, to where you're at, is you can't, you can't just do one. You can't pick one and be like, ah, and I've succeeded. It has to be both, but which was harder to cultivate for that's a you? Good question. Nobody's ever asked me that. So that's a good question. I like that. Um, I don't know. Uh, probably the exercise. Um, you know, the diet's more trial and error, uh, tweaking it and playing with it. But the exercise. I mean, my knees are just kill me whenever you try to walk, and it was hard for me to get blisters on the feet, and you know that I dreaded the the exercise more than I did the diet. But um, you know, there's times in the diet that I've I've, I've um, struggled a lot too. So I mean, it's 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 a good question. I don't know, but I would probably say exercise because of my knees and my feet. 
because I've pushed myself pretty hard trying to get through this, and 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 I would I would argue, and I know that I, I don't think I've ever seen. I think this is I think I'm arguing more than most people because I I've been telling people it's ninety five percent diet. You right. can't, and the DDP always tells me uh, you can't outwork a bad diet, bro. So every time yeah. I lose weight, he, you know, he jumps on me about my diet. The exercise is good, but I just think it's a small, small part of it. You know, your body is going to burn uh, so much fuel just getting through your normal days. And right. you know, I think they call it the um, basal metabolic rate or the resting metabolic rate or right. something like that. Absolutely. So, you, so you've got a number of calories that you're going to be eating. I mean, that you just eat just to keep your normal body weight. And, and if you eat a little less than that, you're going to uh, b- burn some of those XX. Something's going to get burned for the, for the energy. And, um, you know, the, uh, shit, I lost my train of thought. See, when you get 55 years old, you lose, <laughs> you lose your train of thought. Uh, well, no, but I, I think but, uh, I understand what you're saying is that there has to be, you know, you can, you can, work out until you're blue in the face but if you haven't altered and created some sort some sort of caloric deficit then you're not going to see the result it's it's way easier to put in calories than it is to burn calories by just doing physical activity i mean you know i think about michael phelps when he was going into the olympics and on his rest day he was like eating 5600 calories at mcdonald's Mm -hmm. and i'm looking at that and i'm like yeah that's impressive I did that three days ago, you know, <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> but, but the difference was, was his output. And yeah, he would really do a lot of physical activity, but there's no way as he progresses in age that he's going to be able to keep mm-hmm. doing the output of the activity to counterbalance the input of the calories. So, you know, mm-hmm. once we get to the point of, you know, I'm, I'm 42. So, you know, I don't have that, metabolism of youth and the testosterone of youth that's just going to eat up everything I'm putting in. I have to be mm-hmm. aware of what I'm doing. And, and I would agree. I think for me, the hardest thing is the, the exercise, the, the habit of exercise. But I really yeah. like what you were saying with the idea of, you know, if you, if you like for me, what I interpreted it as was I can make it to the gym guaranteed one day every week but I guarantee I'd be able to do it a couple days more if every single day I woke up and put on my gym clothes, even if I didn't go. And as that habit started to increase, and I think, I think that's, you know, the conversation's not over yet, but so far, I think that's my biggest takeaway is, you know, it really is those little habits and, and how far, how far down can you break it to the minuscule habits that will eventually equal the building blocks of success, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. With that, did you ever think that you would be at the weight you're at today? Looking, (laughs) looking back at this, you think you were going to, did you think you were going to reach this amount of success? I mean, I'm not saying the the journey's over for you, but you know, at 234, I mean, we're talking almost two adults, average size adults. You've lost in weight. Did no, you, man. I, did you, you think know, this day would I, I, I had nothing. You know, when I first put out that video and, and I had no goals, no visions. And then I started setting goals along the way. But none of them ever got to this point. Thank you all so much for tuning in to this week's episode of 52 Weeks. Big thank you to Vance Hines. Uh, It was uh, an amazing time that we got to spend hanging out in this conversation. This is a two-part episode, so make sure you come back uh, this coming week for part two. Like, subscribe, share. We got all the ringy-dingy bells and things like that for you guys to go crazy on. Uh, There's a Patreon. We've got uh, merchandise, and we've also got uh, an email. Yeah email we got one of those all those links are going to be down in the description again thank you all so so much for hanging out and uh five minutes man it could change your life